In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you my backup process that I use to keep all of my sites backed up and be able to restore to a backed up version with one click if something goes wrong. Say I'm hacked or the server goes down and, this, and files are deleted, stuff happens. So I can restore back to any one of those backed up versions using this process I'm gonna show you today. And I use two plugins, they're both free. One is MainWP and one is Updraft Plus. MainWP allows me to set this up for as many sites as I want and it allows me to schedule the backups. And Updraft Plus allows me to back up the sites to various places, including Google Drive, which is what I use, but there's a whole bunch of other places. And my name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell if you find this kind of tutorial useful. And we're getting started right now. So this site is a plain Jane WordPress site. I've installed it locally using Local by Flywheel. There's a link in the description to show you how to set that up down below if you want to have local sites running right on your computer instead of having to have all your sites on a server. Great for development. It's also great for management of other WordPress sites using the process I'm going to show you now. So like I said, plain Jane WordPress site, nothing going on. So we log into the back end. We go to our plugins. We see we have no plugins installed. Totally bare bones. Add new plugin. Search for main WP, the one we want on this main site. This is the one that's going to control or manage all the other sites. We want to install main WP dashboard. On the sites we are controlling, we're going to install main WP child. We'll get to that in just a little bit. So first install main WP dashboard on the main controller website. Install now and then click activate. Now we're met with this setup walkthrough process that we'll get to in just a second. But first I just want to say that MainWP has a free version and a paid version. This tutorial shows you just the free version and we're setting up just backups. There's a bunch of other stuff you can do with the free version and the paid version allows you to do a whole lot more. There's a link in the description down below to a MainWP tutorial where I give you a big overview of everything you can do. This video is very specific. So if you want to know more about this plugin, check out that tutorial down below. Right now we're gonna walk through the setup. I'm gonna set up just the free version. So let's click on let's go to get started on this setup process. First question is what server are you installing this on? I'm installing it on localhost using local by flywheel. If you're using a web host, like any other hosting company, choose web host. The reason I like local for a management website is with this plugin, if someone hacks this site, for example, some, some active hacker who's a person hacking, not a bot, but who's a person hacking into your site, they can then get into all your child sites which is not good for business. But if it's on your local computer, it'll be very difficult for them to hack into it because it's on your local computer and it's shut off a lot of the time. So you don't really need to worry about hacking as much when you have this locally. One of the drawbacks is if you have things running on a cron job, meaning there's a schedule to something, like in this tutorial we'll schedule backups, then having it running locally and turned off, the backups don't happen. Whereas in the web host, you don't have that kind of problem. Next question is which operating system? This computer is a Mac, so I choose that. Click on continue. Now it's checking whether we pass all these requirements here. In this case, I pass all of them. Click on continue. So if you find this kind of tutorial useful, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Hosting setup, how many sites do you plan to manage? Less than 50, more than 50. The questions differ further on down the path, depending on what you choose. I'm gonna choose less than 50. Continue. You want to hide your main WP network. When you're working locally, it's not so important, but if you're working on a live web server, you will want to hide your network. That just means that you can hide that you're using main WP if you want to or not. There's also a, an add-on as well. I believe it's a free add-on that allows you to completely hide the entire site. You should install this on a site that has just main WP because you'll see in just a minute, it totally revamps the entire backend. And when you do that, you can actually have a plugin installed that when someone comes to the front end of the site, there's just nothing there. So the site's completely hidden, so to speak. You wanna add main WP child to trusted updates, yes or no. If it's a trusted update, that means it'll be auto updated on any child sites. I just set that to yes. Click on continue. Notifications, you can choose to receive them or not. Continue. Do we wanna use main WP for backups? The answer is yes, that's the main purpose of this video. And I'm using Updraft Plus. There are actually six other backup extensions that are available with main WP. Three of them are free. Updraft Plus is the one we're gonna do in this video. Feel free to try the others if it doesn't work for you for whatever reason. But Updraft Plus is my favorite. I'm just gonna stick with that. Then click on continue. So here we need to register an main WP account. We don't actually have to, 
but it's it's encouraged because when you download this these extensions you get free maintenance and free updates for all the free extensions and you only get those if you have an account if you register and you link it to main wp directly then you get the updates so the free account is free so if you click on here to register you just fill out this form right here on the right and you're registered then once you have that once that's set up before I tell you the next step, you can actually click on here to, to register later and just download the plugin, but this never seems to work. Every time I try it, I click here, I get this error right here, undefined error. So it doesn't actually work that way, at least not from my experience. So when you have registered your account, you have a username and password, click continue, then you enter your username and password here, click on continue again, and now it should successfully log in and download the extension. And this time it worked. Installing the extension now. Extension installed, successfully activated. Very nice, Go click on continue. This is where we set up our cron. Now, if you have a website with traffic where you're installing this, which I don't recommend you do, you don't need to do, worry about anything. But if you're installing it on localhost or you're installing it on a dedicated website where you have nothing else but MainWP and that site won't get any traffic, the wp-cron.php will not trigger. It will not fire and that's required for scheduling things. So what you need to do is authorize uptime robot, also free. Click on this button, sign in. I've got a dedicated tutorial for Uptime Robot as well. So I'll put that link in the description down below so you can check out Uptime Robot. There we go, paste that in there, click on Authenticate. Now we have our API key. If I refresh this page, it should load that information into here. So there it is. Click on Continue. And again, Uptime Robot tutorial in the description down below. Clean up our dashboard, we can choose what to show, what not to show. I'm gonna leave all this as it is because that's not the point of this tutorial. That's the other main WP tutorial, link to down below. Click on add new site, which is what we want to do here. And this new site we're going to add is going to be the one that has the main WP child plugin. And here we have a tour. We're not going to go through that. You can. Up here, this warning says you should install this on a new WordPress install, I have nothing else there. And I'm just going to say, yep, did that. You have not set your main child plugins for auto updates. Let's turn that on. Now we want to connect our first site, which is the page we're on currently. So we need the URL of the first site. And the one I'm going to add is this one here. It's just an Elementor Pro and Elementor Free, for that matter, demo site. And I don't have this connected at all to the main WP, but I want to keep backups in case it goes down, data is lost, it gets hacked. So I don't really maintain it. I don't use it. I'm really there. So things go out of date and I don't even know about it. So I want to make sure I have a backup solution in place. And the site URL is Elementor 2019 dot com. Paste that in there. We need the admin username, which is this. The friendly site name is just for inside of main WP in this dashboard. So I'm just going to call this Elementor 2019. If you're managing a lot of sites, you can have groups for sites. I'm not going to do that in this case. This next section, we can auto install the Updraft Plus plugin that's needed on the child site. And yes, we do want to do that. You can also apply Updraft Plus settings, which you can set in here. So the main WP allows you to install new plugins or deactivate plugins or change settings on plugins on as many sites as you want all at the same time. And you can set all this up in here. We haven't set up any settings, so it doesn't matter if I check that or not. But we will install the Updraft plugin on that child site. Now this next part, the child unique security ID is not required anymore, but it's good to have. And we get that by installing the main WP child plugin on this site. So we go to the dashboard, go to plugins, and then add new, and then look for main WP child, install, activate. Now it says here, make sure you connect this to your main WP dashboard immediately or deactivate this plugin because just randomly somebody else might add this site to their main WP and then they get control of it. The chance of that happening is so slim that it's, it probably never happens, but they just wanna cover all their bases and make sure you know that. And now we go into our settings and the main WP child and we're gonna require the unique, unique security ID Click on Save Changes. Here's our security ID. Copy that. Paste that into here. Verify certificate. I believe that's SSL certificate. Does not have an SSL on this child site because it doesn't. So make sure you choose yes or no based on what SSL it has. Auto detect is going to turn up no. Force use of IP4 is not needed, but you can if you want. HTTP username and password are if you need a username and password to even access the website itself. In this case, you don't. And if you don't know what those are, you probably don't either. So click on add new site when you have those things set up. And now we have this new site added. But we can see when we hover over 
the site information here. It says Updraft Plus Backup Restore, Backup Now. So we're set up for Updraft Plus. We just need to install it on the child site. So let's go to Add New and search for Updraft Plus. This plugin also has a free version and a paid version. And what we want is this one right here. Click on Install Now and then Activate. And now we have our Updraft Plus plugin installed. Click on Press here to start. And we have it rocking and rolling. And now when we go back here and we go to Updraft Plus Backup Restore, it shows it as not there yet. That might happen to you. So let's go back to where we were, the site list, and click on Sync Data. Whenever you make some changes, you got to sync the data. So it, the main WP goes out to the child site and sees what's there, what's changed. And now if we click on Updraft Plus Backup Restore, it should recognize Updraft Plus being there, and we'll have different options. So now we have these options here, including Backup Now. When we click this, it's going to back up the full site and the full database right now. And then to restore it, you just restore it. So if you make backups on a regular basis and something goes wrong, you can easily come in here and restore. And with MainWP, you can do this for as many sites as you have under your supervision. Now when you press backup, it's going to use the settings that are in the Updraft Plus plugin on the child site. So let's go back here. Let's go to Settings. Oh, sorry, Settings, not Advanced Tools. So the backups will go, by default, I believe they go onto the server. And if you don't want it to go onto the server, you have these options to back up to any of these. I have a Google Drive account, so I'm just going to back up to Google Drive because that's super easy. Click on Google Drive. You can pick a folder or give the folder a name we're going to back up to. That's for the premium version. The free version, the folder is always going to be Updraft Plus, which is fine for me. But that may not be fine for you. So you need the premium version to change that folder name, but I don't see why that'd be a big deal. We need to authenticate with Google after we save changes. So first we save changes down at the bottom, and then it's actually authenticating right here or giving us the pop-up for it. So we click on this link, and that will take us to Google Drive. And you have to do this for every single site. So even if you have a site set up already with this main WP setup and this Google Drive account, you still have to authorize every single site. Click on whatever your Google Drive account is. Click on Allow. Click on Complete Setup. You don't need to do anything else here if you don't want to. Click on Complete Setup. And now we have our Google Drive syncing in place. Now if we go back to Updraft Plus, let's just sync everything again for good measure. Click on this little circular update icon and then click on Sync Data over here. Like I said, you always want to make that after you made some changes on the child site. Go to Updraft Plus Backups tab, and let's just for fun do a backup. Click on Backup Now. You can choose what not to include if you don't want to include certain things. I'm just going to keep it as is and click Backup Now. And I'm going to fast forward this, or I'm going to pause it and then come back once it's done. Here it's going already. Oh, it's pretty quick. Anyway, I'll fast forward it so you don't have to watch painfully as this progresses, and then I'll come back when it's done. There we go. Backup is done already. That was pretty quick. So it shows here, backup done this time in this day. And you see this in various places throughout main WP, but this is one of the spots. Now, if we go into our Google Drive account just for fun and then search for the updraft folder, I have a bunch of other backups in there as well, but this one should be there now. So backup for all these ones, that's all good and fine. And then, as you can see, there's a lot of backups should be from today. These ones are all from today. And there it is. It's got to move around to see my see past my mic. So here are all the backups that we just made a few moments ago. And it's the database, it's all the files, it's all various things broken up into these different zip files. And then if we want to restore, click on restore, you can choose which backup to restore. So if you had an incident, like the site was hacked, you will know, hopefully, approximately when it was hacked and you will have backups backdated to before then and then you can just pick the correct one to be a whole list here if you have multiple backups and then click on restore and your site's back online. So that keeps your site and your work a little more safe and secure for when the inevitable hack happens because they do happen and having a backup to restore to is priceless. Trust me. It's the greatest feeling in the world. The worst feeling in the world is having your site gone and you got to either do it manually, clean up the hack manually, or the site's just gone. That's the worst feeling in the world. The best feeling in the world is having a backup to restore to. So the very last piece of my backup process 
is scheduling these things. If we head over to settings, scroll down a little bit, we have our backup contents and schedule. And there's a files backup schedule and a database backup schedule. You can have them both at the same time or both different, it's up to you. By default, it's set to manual. And this is something that is set inside of MainWP if you want to, you can have, if you do this a lot for a lot of sites, you can have it so you have default settings for you, your own default settings for Updraft Plus that can be pushed out to the child site as the plugin's installed, as the Updraft Plus plugin's installed. And so you don't have to set this manually for every site if you don't want to, but you can, uh, it's up to you. For our schedules, we have these options here and how many backups to keep. Two is the default. How many you should keep is again up to you. If you publish a lot of content, say you publish a blog post every single day and you wanna make sure that when you do have to revert back, you don't revert back to a month ago and be 30 blog posts out, you wanna make sure that your backup schedule is appropriate to whatever your publishing or change schedule on the website is. What I usually do is I have a daily backup for the past seven days and I find that works pretty well. And then I change this to seven. So I keep seven daily backups. That one's seven as well. And the, the hope is that if something does happen, I notice it within seven days of it happening, and then I can just revert back to a seven day old or six day old or five day old, or whatever day old backup I have in order to fix it, in order to restore back to something that works. Now, if you think you need more than that, obviously you choose more. You can have 70 in here. You can keep 70 backups. It all depends on how much space you have wherever you're saving this data. And if your website's large, say your database is a gigabyte and your, your images and everything is two or three gigabytes, so you have these multi-gigabyte backup files that take up a lot of space if you're backing up daily. So that's another consideration. How much space do you have? How many backups do you need? What's the right balance? Because you want to make sure you're protected, but you also want to make sure you don't tax whatever account that you're backing up to, especially if you're managing a lot of sites. So I'm gonna just delete that 70. And these settings down below, you'll recognize them as being the same as in the Updraft Plus plugin on the child site. If you do change the backup schedule here from manual to something else, make sure you save your changes. And before you do, to actually make this take effect, make this no a yes. Click on save and then save changes at the bottom to make sure you have your schedule saved. And now if we go back to current status, you remember this said uh, nothing scheduled or something like that. And now it says when the next scheduled backup will be. And since we do it daily, it will do it today in a few minutes. So right now, or when we did this, it was uh, 3.41. It's gonna do it at 3.51 and then do it daily at that time. If you wanna schedule a specific time of day, you can only do that with Updraft Plus Premium, not with a free one. But I find it's not that big of a deal. My sites aren't that large in, in content size. And I find the traffic is not too brutally affected by doing backups with Updraft Plus. Now for much larger sites with much higher traffic, I'm sure it'd be an issue. But so far for my usage, what I've found works for me is exactly what I've shown you here. And having those backups in place is priceless. And if you have a different backup process, we'd love to hear about it. Just leave it in the comments down below and let us know what your process is because just because I do this way doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. And I always find better and new ways to do things. So leave in the comments down below and let me know what your backup process is. Let everybody know what it is. And maybe yours is much better than what we just saw here. So that's how I back up all my sites. And I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell icon so you don't miss any videos that I upload. And next up is clicking this video that popped up right here. And that one explains why you likely will be hacked, why it's inevitable that you're gonna be hacked and you need a process like you saw in this video right here. So make sure you check that out. And down here is the video that YouTube thinks you should watch. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.